Welcome back. Welcome to. Thanks for having me. Well, before we get started, I, I did a little case study and I spent a little bit of time with Bill Belichick. And we filmed some stuff specifically for this. And so before we even jump in, Gino, when I say Bill Belichick, what are the thoughts that come to your mind? He always has a plan of what's next. Like most people have a plan for what they're doing now. He's always, it's, it's what appears to me, he always has a plan for what's next. Could be next game, could be next year. He always has in mind, this is what's gonna happen next. And what's happening today, that's just another step in that direction. When I asked you about it, you said that their organization moves so fast. What do you mean by that? Well, I just think when you, when you go over there and you've been fortunate enough to go over and watch them go through some of their stuff and get to know a bunch of their staff um, and Coach Belichick a little bit, I, th I think the thing that stands out to me is that everyone's on one page. And, you know, whether it is how they move from, you know, film room to film room, drill to drill, um, on and off the field, whatever the case may be, the tempo at which they work is incredible, uh, clearly very efficient, but everybody is on the same page. It, it is about the New England Patriots having success. And um, what Coach Oriema just said is, is really true. And, I would think really hard to do, you know, when he's sitting in a, in a different seat than I am because he's not only the coach, but he's also, you know, doing a lot of the front office maneuvering as well. And I think, um, you know, one of the hardest things a as a coach is to stay in the moment. And he has to do both things, you know, the big and the, and the, the big picture and the now really well. And he does it as well as anyone. Um, but it's incredible to be there and watch just how organized and how committed they are to being on one page. Well, the first question I asked, and I'll roll the video, is how in the evaluation process do you find out whether or not someone aligns with your organization? And here's what he said. Yeah, that's a tough question. Um, really, the draft is kind of like a mosaic. Um, there, there are a lot of different components of it. There are physical components. There are um, you know, work ethic experience. Um, you know, leadership, teamwork, you know, a whole psychological component to it. Um, so it's, it's just a little bit of everything. And then in the end, you have to put it all together on one, you know, one canvas and figure out what the value of it is. That's really what it's about. So uh, sometimes it might be a little heavier on one end or a little lighter on another end. And every mix is a little bit different because we're all different and our skills are different and our makeup's different. So there are no two identical mosaics, um, but in the end you have to put a value on them and what they would be for you, not what they'd be for somebody else, but what they'd bring to your team. And that's, so that's what we try to do. So everything counts, everything's important, but in the end it's a, it's a composite of a lot of things as opposed to just uh, you know, value on one particular thing that overrides all the rest of it. It really, it, it's just part of the picture. I see you're nodding your head over here. Yeah, I mean, I think that the other thing that I would say that I appreciate about them is, and one of the things that I was really fortunate, I had great mentors and, and bosses in this business at a young age, and one of them, Todd Licklider, used to always talk about, you know, soaring with your strengths. And I think that they do a great job of that, and I don't understand the X's and O's and all that stuff about football at all, but they clearly do a great job of putting people in position to soar with their strengths. He's an economist, right, with his approach. And you called a, a guidance counselor. What are you looking for when, in your evaluation process? You know, I think the biggest thing is that you're just always looking to see how people learn, um, you know, how hard they work, if they're excited about working and all those things. The, the one that was meant that, that you're probably referring to, you know, I got nothing but glowing remarks, um, just a tremendous um, remarks, but you. But I think as much as anything, you're not necessarily looking for information, but but also validating what maybe you um, have seen in a meeting uh, on some, how somebody would learn something, how you would best be able to coach or teach them, those types of things. But you know, again, from a basketball perspective, I want to make I want to make my own judgment on 
what somebody brings to the table based on the strengths they have, not what they have been told they can't do. Um, and I think if you put enough of those strengths together and they match well, then you can have a good team. He referred to the mosaic. And when I asked you about the recruiting process and just evaluation in general, you compared it to something artistic as well. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's just in the recruiting process or in um, even with your team, you know. Um, I, I like to give them examples of other people that are great at what they do. Um, you know, so I'll use different examples. Um, like when we're playing, if we're playing, what's the point of playing? Well, we're trying to win, okay, but we win all the time. So do you really think that people are getting in their car and driving up to UConn to watch a game and saying, what do you think? You think they're going to win tonight? They're not saying that. So what other reason are you going to give them to come to the game? You're going to have to perform in a way that they're going to see something that they can't see somewhere else. So it's entertainment now. So we got to have that person that would rather come watch us play than go to a movie or stay home and watch something on their big screen television. So I say to my players, when you go to a concert, what's the last concert you went to? And they'll all say, you know, whatever, ba 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 ba. I go, well, let me ask you a question. At that concert, did so-and-so, did they get every third song wrong? Like when they were singing their favorite song that you like, was every other lyric, did they miss a word? They'd be like, no. I said, does it ever happen? They're like, no. Right, they're pros. There's a reason why you're going to pay $300 to go watch them perform because you know you can't get that just anywhere. And, and that makes them think. You know, I had a chance to go to the Cavs game at, at the, uh, during the playoffs, and I... He just asked to be reimbursed. Yeah. <laughs> Rightfully so. Luckily, I didn't pay for the tickets. <laughs> and the owner was good enough to say, Coach, you can sit down here where, where I sit, right next to us. So I got the tickets and I had them in my pocket. And I didn't even check, so we're sitting right here, right on the baseline. And you know, I got home and I took the tickets out of my pocket because I was getting changed. And I look at them, you got to be kidding me. Those seats are $3,200 per ticket. Did you know that? No. <laughs> doesn't make, so doesn't make me feel any better either. You don't. <laughs> yeah. So a couple more games like that one I saw, they're going to want to be reimbursed. That's right. So the point, the point meaning that we're asking people to pay a lot of money to come watch us do our thing. And if players understood that you need to perform at a real high level to make it worth their while, just like when you go see a movie or you go see a concert, you want them to perform at a real high level to make it worth the investment that you just made. And it makes my players think a lot about what do I owe the paying public? Obviously, I have skills, but if I choose to only use them half-heartedly, then I'm cheating the public. Not just cheating my teammates and cheating the game itself. That's a whole bigger issue. But you're cheating those people that drove all the way up here and paid money to come watch you play. And, and, and I don't know if you were talking about the, 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 the the marble piece, but we, you know, I take my kids to, to Italy, you know, we're allowed to go every four years, so everybody gets at least one trip. And, and when we get there, I explained to them, I said, take a look at this statue. And if any of you have ever been fortunate enough to go to Italy, or a lot of other places as well, but if you go to Florence, the statue of David, it's like one of the most perfect statues ever created by man. And I said, you know what that started with? A perfect piece of marble. Because you can't take a flawed piece of marble and create the perfect statue. Because that statue will always be flawed. Because there's a flaw in the marble. So these guys spend days, months, years maybe, finding that perfect piece of marble. And then they have to chisel it 
one step at a time, and it may take months, years, to finish this statue. One mistake, and he ruins the marble, and he's got to start all over again. One mistake. I said, so all of our players, you guys are like, when we recruit you, we're looking for that perfect piece of marble. Because if we bring in flawed individuals, and we can't fix those flaws, we're never going to be, be able to create the kind of player that, that we think you can be. Now, once you get here, you know, we don't have forever to get this right. We have a finite period of time for us to chisel away all the bad things that could get in the way of making you the player you want to be. We don't have forever to do it. And you try to give them examples of things they can relate to that don't necessarily have a lot to do with, like Brad said, the X's and O's of things.